Catfish on the Bottle Man, Josh Willicombe, good morning, this is XFM. Producer Neil, good morning. Good morning, Josh. How are we? Not too bad. No, you're surprised by that question. We're in a different studio. Yeah. I can see a pub that's opening at, what are we, 10.08 in the morning. <laughs> Bit late, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, who do you think's going, should I keep my eyes out? So that, I mean, there's some people walking past, but they're eyeing it up. Well, how early do you think it's all right to start drinking? I went to Glastonbury last week, and I thought midday is the kind of... That's the rule, isn't it? <laughs> is, that, is that your rule or the rule? I think at a festival, yeah. before midday, that's a bit... You need to have a long, hard look in the mirror, don't you? Or the hello if you are listening via the XFM mobile app in a pub at the moment. Yeah, I mean, if you are listening via the XFM... If you've all met up in the pub and got them to put on XFM... <laughs> Um, they, they might be playing the XFM drinking game. Which is? Oh, we won't go into it. Um, <laughs> but, um... <laughs> they might do a nice breakfast in that pub, which is why they're broke. Oh, they might. They, they are selling breakfast, and they also do coffee. <laughs> of all things. Oh, wow. I do that thing occasionally where you have to... Do you ever ask for a tea in a pub? No. You don't? No. It's like when I went to... Uh, they, they never know what to do. It's like I went to the, um, the Good Mixer in Camden about a decade ago. And I went up to order food, and the barman said, um, do we do food? <laughs> and then he was the one that had to go and make my food. <laughs> one of the worst paper tears I've ever had. We've also got the gold coin exchange as well from our window. Right. Which I don't really even understand what that is. You just bring in, it's like cash for gold, but it has to be coins. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Do you bring in bullion? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's the kind of thing pirates would do, isn't it? The gold coin exchange. Cash buyers for old gold coins. <laughs> they can't be making that much money. Well, they're clearly making enough to sustain it. The only gold coins are chocolate. Like, there's no such thing as a gold coin these days. It's a nice new studio, though, isn't it? It's all right. The You're not happy with it. Do you prefer the old one? Well, the buttons are the opposite way around. The buttons are the opposite way around. I'm a little bit confused. So what's going to happen? You can play the wrong song? No, I can still play the song, but it might not be quite as slick as we used to. Yeah, oh, right. So it's going to be a kind of awkward move into a Code Lines Ready. Oh, no, we're here. Good. Oh, that's good. It's quite slick, actually, wasn't it? Thanks. Your correspondence. Josh, producer Neil, regarding conveyor belt toasters. That's the kind of thing we're looking for. While in staying at, gen at generic hotel chains, I used to get a rather excited by the sight of the conveyor belt toaster. Already I can't get on board with this. So I, I believed I'd perfected the method of producing cheese on toast to the envy of the other guests. Now, presumably you put the cheese on the toast and then it conveyor belts through. Yep. But the problem, surely, is that um, it's going to switch over and land cheese side down as it shoots out. Some of them are just single level, then you have to flip it yourself and turn it. What? No, they're not. Yeah. We well, can't flip it yourself anyway, we've got cheese in it. I don't know. We'll continue with the anecdote. Yeah. At one hotel, I noticed that the angle of the incline for inserting the toast was a little steeper than usual. Fueled by a desire for melted cheese, I attempted my usual trick. Alas, both the slices of cheese fell off the toast, fell off the bread and into the toaster. I frantically looked for the off switch, but to no avail. That seems unlikely, doesn't it, that there's no off switch. There's at least a plug. You've got the turners. All right. The Frank Turners. I frantically looked for the off switch, but to no avail. And out of desperation, I attempted to reach in, but was forced back by the heat. Backdraft? Great by film. this point... Great film, did you say? Yeah. I've never seen it. What happens? I, I'm not going to ruin it. Is this the time? No. OK. By this point, the cheese was now molten at the centre of the machine. Given the situation, I returned to my seat and pretended I had done nothing wrong. Exactly what I would have done. <laughs> Upon checking out of the lobby, it was still overwhelmed by the stench of burnt cheese. Will. I think that's drawn a line under, under conveyor belt toasters. We only mentioned it once. I didn't expect it to roll on like this. Have you um, have you used one at all this week? Not this week, no. No, why not? Because I've been... Do you bring packed for breakfast? No, I eat breakfast before I leave the house. Do you? Yeah. What time do you leave the house? About 20 past seven normally. Oof. What do you have for breakfast? I had Cocoa Pops this morning. Oh, grow up. <laughs> Hide... You had Cocoa Pops? They turn the milk chocolatey. Yeah, well, I'm fully aware of that, mate. I, well, I mean, do you buy them for yourself? Because surely your daughter's too young for Cocoa Pops, isn't she? Yeah, she's not allowed them. They're bad for you. Yeah. Well, they're not bad for you, but... <laughs> oh, you caught yourself there. Let's have a healthy, maintained diet. 
Oh, my word. Someone's worried about that Kellogg sponsorship money. Hi, Josh, producer Neil in intern Charles. Are they still sponsoring your fun run? What's next? Hi, Josh, producer Neil and intern Charles. I have a question about how you would turn the milk chocolatey and what it does for your health. <laughs> Any ideas, producer Neil? <laughs> it's every, like everything, it's all about moderation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that's true, is it? That's not the case with broccoli. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm sure you don't want to eat just broccoli. Yeah, no, I'm not saying... I suppose, yeah, with everything, it's moderation. For in, Yeah, but that's, that's not... If that's the case, then that's not even a statement. It is a statement, I just made it. <laughs> I, I just produced nearly in turn, Charles. I'm a couple of weeks behind on podcasts. and just decided to investigate where James Bay might actually be. A cursed research on Google Maps reveals James Bay is located between Ontario and Quebec in Canada. The Wikipedia page is a good read. <laughs> I wonder if James Bay's gutted that he's not... I mean, we asked this question two weeks ago. We didn't even bother to Google it or check that the fact the main Wikipedia page just says James Bay. My friend at Glastonbury, he, um, he fell asleep during James Bay. Oh. Yeah, and um, so his friends bought him a James Bay T-shirt uh, for the rest of Glastonbury. And he spent the rest of Glastonbury having to have conversations with people he didn't know about how they were both big fans of James Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, hi Josh, re-coffee shops in last week's show and names on cups. I recently returned from a trip to Holland on the way back through the channel. Brilliant. No one says that anymore, do they? I think we should bring back channel as a, um... Ah, oh, that really makes me nostalgic. It's a good word. It is, the ERM, Black Wednesday, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> John Major, Norman Lamont, the channel. I bought a Starbucks and was slightly offended when the guy said, here is your coffee, madam. Open brackets, French accent, closed brackets. Oh, well, I'm getting old, 35, I thought. Not mademoiselle anymore. When I returned to my family, my husband looked at my cup and said, why are you called Adam? <laughs> That's from Jane. That's more or less all we want. Josh at xfm.co.uk if you have any correspondence. Josh Whittacombe. Podcast. Smashing Pumpkins on XFM, this is Josh Whittacombe. Two people have gone into the pub. <laughs> Exciting times. I think it was for breakfast, because I was... I mean, I'm not saying I wasn't fully engaged with the Smashing Pumpkins, but I was observing them um, uh, looking, and they, uh, they they checked out the breakfast menu before entering. <laughs> Unless they, that was their cover. <laughs> Two alcoholics, but they thought, if we check out the breakfast menu, then we can go in and have six Stellas before lunch. Unless, I mean, I'm saying the breakfast menu, there's every chance that they've got, you know, I can't read it from here. There's every chance they've got a menu of their beers on the wall outside. I'm not sure. I in don't ten, think so. In ten, Charles. <laughs> See you later, Charles. <laughs> Go and get us a beer. Now, uh, today's topics, producer Neil, you had an instant in reception early this week. That sounds much worse than it is. <laughs> Mistaken identity. Yeah, I, w I was waiting for someone in reception. Um... Mm -hmm. Name names. Uh, I'm not going to name names. You're not going to name names? No. Why not? Because I don't need to, and it deviates from what this story's about. So uh, I... If I continue to force you, it's just easier to name names to move on. So there were people sitting, yeah. waiting to be collected. Yeah. And someone came out of the door um, from kind of the offices in yeah. the reception, and they obviously thought, ah, oh, that's the person I'm here to meet. Yeah. So they strode up to them like, hi, how are you doing? So where were you at this point? Standing. Just observing. Yeah, just observing. Right. So the person got up out of the seat and was like, yeah, yeah, I'm good, thanks very much. Yeah. And then they walked back to the door to go through to the offices. <laughs> yeah. And it was at that moment they both realised oh, no. they, they were not the oh, person. They oh, were. how do you think it came up? Do you, you don't know? Uh, I don't know. I was out of earshot by that point. But oh. the, the kind of, the walk back. Oh, the awful walk of shame. Person sat They down. almost had a Guy Goma style situation. Who's that? What's that? Guy Goma was the, you must remember the guy that, the taxi driver that mistakenly ended up on a BBC <laughs> Breakfast interview. Yeah, I do now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you don't know he's called Guy Goma. Sorry. No, it's all right. Um, but um, would you have, would you have carried on, because if someone gets my name wrong, mm -hmm. I would never correct them. Would you? Uh, I don't have the guts. I'll just continue to be a... Uh, yeah. Jeff. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're looking for cases when you've been mistaken for someone else or you've mistaken for someone for someone else. It's a horrible situation. I um, I don't like it if... Because I, I, I've never got the guts to say I don't know someone. 
So I'll continue with the conversation. Guy came up to me last night in the pub. I was stood... It's about 8 o'clock last night. And he came up and he just said, um, how's your day been? But I was with a, my mate and a group of his friends. So I presumed he was one of my mate's friends. So I said, good. So, um, he said, what did you... What have you been up to? I said, oh, I... I did a gig. And he was like, oh, what kind of gig? And at that point, I realised he didn't know me. <laughs> and I was just stood near his friend. <laughs> and he clearly thought I was a friend of his friend. And the whole thing got very awkward, but then he tried to persist with the conversation. And I thought, this isn't the strong basis for a <laughs> friendship that both of us thought we knew each other, but we don't. Also, I didn't like his shirt. Now, uh, the second one... Um, this is um, things you had to do while someone else was on holiday. We, we, I mean, we should have done this before, mate. <laughs> I, but we're looking for basically house-sitting stories or when you've had to do something for someone while they're away. I house-sitted once for my friend, um, and I mistakenly... Um, I, uh, I had to house-sit because she had a cat, mm -hmm. which was fine. But I didn't like the cat food. I had to, used to have to retch into the sink while I was um, getting the cat food out of the tin, <laughs> which was hugely unpleasant. Have you got a cat? I don't have a cat, no. The cat food, I just don't know how people deal with it. Go for dry. Go for dry. Well, was, they had dry, but you had to go wet and dry. Oh, OK. Fussy cat called Porsche. Oh, dear. Yeah. Anyway, have you ever ha house-sitted or done something else for someone while they were on holiday? Well, yeah, yeah, growing up, I had to look after um, someone's house, and the, the only task was to collect the milk. Cause yeah. they'd gone away day one. They'd gone, oh, no, we've forgotten to cancel the milk. Yeah. I, however, forgot, so they came back from holidays. Oh, God. <laughs> How old were you? Must have been about 12. Right. Why did they contact you? Well, no, they contacted my mum and dad. And right. My mum and dad were like, do you want to earn a tenner? Yeah. So two weeks later, they came back to 28. Oh, my God. People must have thought they died. <laughs> Surprised the police didn't break down their... D Why was the milkman still putting it down? Well, he's... he's Isn't it his, his duty to go, well, they, these guys clearly don't like milk. <laughs> Also, well, look after, does that mean drink? Well, I think it was kind of collect it, maybe give it out to people if they're... Just you know, hand out on the street. Yeah. Or just like, create something, whatever whatever needs milk, custard. Whatever needs milk. <laughs> Cocoa Pops. Cocoa Pops, yeah. Did they come back to find 12, 28 pints of chocolate milk on their, <laughs> on their steps? I wish. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have them every morning? No, no, it's, it's more recent. It's just a treat this week? Yeah, just this week. Okay, so the two topics are mistaken identity. When have you been mistaken for someone else or mistaken someone for someone else? That's what mistaken identity is. <laughs> Anything around the topic. Or things you had to do for people while they're on holiday. And stories thus of. 83936 is the text number. Tweet us at XFM. Josh Widdicombe. Jack Garrett weathered on XFM. We are talking about mistaken identity on the Josh Whittacombe show. We're not looking for stuff along the following lines. <laughs> a girl once mistook me for my mate. I went with it and got off with her. He doesn't know to this day. Oh, sad times, isn't it? We are looking for that kind of thing. 83936 or tweet us at XFM. Josh Widdicombe. Podcast XFM. Turner, the next storm. Josh Widdicombe on XFM. Talking, well, we're talking about two things, as always, which, uh, you know, has led to a uh, drop in the quality of the things we talk about because we're doing too many, but, you know, it's not for me to point that out. So we're talking about your favourite letter of the alphabet. And, um, no, that's your next Your favourite colour. Your favourite colour. J, green. Right, now, yours? I can't believe we're actually discussing it. A, royal blue. A, royal blue. <laughs> what we'll do, we'll do a game where you, you have to write in, um, we, we'll, we'll get you know, various celebrities and then you have to guess the celebrity from the, from <laughs> the letter and the colour. It's nice, isn't it, royal blue? Yeah, maybe I'll change it to that, actually. Anyway, still, we're not talking about that, we're talking about mistaken identity and this would fit under humble brags. Uh, Stuart Lodge, I get mistaken. For the drummer from for the drummer from Fight Star loads. Now that's I wouldn't know. Is that the boy with Charlie? I was going to say Charlie. Um, Charlie Simpson. Charlie Simpson. Height 190 centimeters. I remember that from when I had um, Smash Hits Top Trumps when I was touring around America. <laughs> four factor, pretty high. 94, I think it was a four factor. <laughs> um, anything else on him? No. 
he used to big be eyebrows, in, didn't he? Yeah, he used to be busted. Do you think he regrets? Um, do you think he regrets uh, leaving busted? No, no, I think he made the right decision. I was at, I was at Wimbledon on Tuesday, and a guy came up to me. I was just waiting outside the toilet, and he said, "Um, hiya, Josh." I didn't know him. He said, "Um, I'm looking for the McFly boys." <laughs> Have you seen them? And I said, I said, I, I don't know what the McFly boys look like. <laughs> and he said, oh, I presumed you'd know them. <laughs> <laughs> what, because you have a kind of... Oh, I don't, know, I don't know what kind of life he thought. I presume they were there as well. It wasn't just a general thing that he was desperate to find the McFly boys. <laughs> but I felt like I was being rude by saying, I, I, you know, I couldn't help you. <laughs> so would you be able to identify McFly in a lineup, Dressed in their mufti, not dressed as McFly? I could probably... I'd, I'd have... I'd have an attempt. You'd have an attempt? Yeah. Well, that's that's the main thing. That's what makes Britain great. <laughs> I, I, Dougie, is he a McFly? Anyway. Oh, yeah, Dougie. Yeah. Now, uh, this is on a uh, house sitting. Has it got a name? I don't think it's got a name, has it? Nigel, yeah, it has Nigel in Muswell Hill. I w- was house watching a neighbour's property when they were on holiday looking after the... Ha- looking after the house plants. They got burgled in the second week. They never outright accused me, but they didn't give me the keys again, and there was a bit of an atmosphere. <laughs> I wouldn't have minded, but the stuff the burglars took was rubbish. <laughs> I don't... I, well, that would... I, I'm not ruling Nigel out of my inquiries. I don't think that is a definite... You know, I'm not accusing him of anything. I'm just saying maybe the text to X of M is a double bluff just to totally clear his name. They stole all the plants. It was as if the well, yeah. plants had Why died you... and had to go missing. Do you think he continued walking, watering the plants even after the burglary? I'd hope so. He probably reported the burglary as well. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, let's not go into that, but if you've got any evidence on the Muswell Hill um, burglary, <laughs> that's a, it's a terrible way to start a sentence because um, it sounds like you're going to... I mean, there's a famous crimes in Muswell Hill that were far bleaker than the burglary. Yeah, let's just crack let's on. move on. The vaccines. Have they ever done a double header with a cure? <laughs> Don't think they have. I mean, chance missed. And do you know the third band that could do it? Dr. Carl Kendi's band, The Right Prescription. <laughs> what a tour that would be, eh? Well, Dr. Feelgood. Four. Dr. Feelgood. 83936, tweet us at X of M. Who should join the um, the medical tour? Yep. Um, have you uh, ever seen the Ventolins? No. <laughs> they take your breath away. Oh! <laughs> Finally, we've kicked into gear. We're joined by what? If anything, they would. They, if anything, they, would, they, they don't take your breath away, yeah. Yeah, no. Oh, dear. Well, I'll, I'll retract that <laughs> straight back. Um, we're joined by Matthew Crosby after 11. It's not going to get better than this, though, is it? Josh Widdicombe. Jimi Hendrix on X of M. This is Josh Widdicombe, producer Neil still here. Morning. Matthew Crosby is struggling with his headphones. Hello. Hello. I'm not are you all right with them? No, I, I'll, I'll go without. Go without. Go, I'll get he- headphones free. I mean, you are literally, you know, half a foot away from me. <laughs> exactly. exactly. It's, it's tight, isn't it, this Yeah, thing? it's a tiny little studio. Yeah. But I like it. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. Thanks for having me in again. No worries. Uh, do you want to uh, hear more for our tour? What, who was it? The Vaccines and the Cure? Yeah, our medical tour. Yeah, placebo. Great. Or, or I mean... They could play, or they could just not play, but people have thought. <laughs> How does that quite, it doesn't quite work as an analogy. Well, the thing is, they would play, and while you're watching them, you're thinking, this is a good band. And then afterwards you go, hang on a sec, no, it was placebo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't possibly comment on that. No, 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 no. I like him. Uh, yeah. Hats yeah. off to Brian if he's, uh, if he's listening. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Can you name any other members of placebo? Um, oh, dear. Uh, no. That's a, that, is there a band that more... Um, I say Skunk and Nancy is I'd another band. I'd say Simply Red. <laughs> Simply Red. <laughs> <laughs> they were very much the indie Simply Red, yeah. weren't they? So, imagine, is Simply Red a rotating cast, or is it a still a band? It's basically a Hucknall and a bunch of session musicians, yeah. Is it? What about Skunk and Nancy? Did they have regular members, or was it I think they were skin? real... Yeah, they were a band, and it's oh, just they had man. a very charismatic front uh, person. Yeah, Ace was the guitarist. Ah, there we go. Ace? Yep. How do you know that? Were they all one word? Was it so? It's skin <laughs> and ace, bass, drums. And they skin, bass, bass, and drums. I don't know. You can't have ace and bass in the same band. <laughs> you can't. You can have ace, ace and bass. Ace and bass. Ace and bass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
It's all that we want, mate. All that she wants. I loved Ace of Base. Yeah, <laughs> cracking, cracking band. Are they, play the play- Ace are they on the playlist? <sighs> no, they're very much not on the playlist. Well, if we did play Ace of Base, would we be more likely to push through All That She Wants or The Sign? If we really went for trying to get it on. All That She Wants. But it, it would never happen. That saxophonist... He really got a lot out of, uh, 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 didn't he? <laughs> like he plays, that's was, the only thing he plays. That, do you reckon they were sitting on that uh, saxophonist <laughs> bit for a while, or do you reckon they? <laughs> and the guy goes, "Well, I've bought a saxophone. I have only had a couple of lessons, but I can go." Uh, 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 and they're like, "Don't worry, that is all we need. We will build, build, the build the song around the song around." I don't know if it was a real sax. I think it was the keyboard sax sound. I'm not going to lie to you. Me making that sound sounds more like a saxophone than. <laughs> Then it's a basis saxophone, dude. <laughs> do, uh, do, was it number one? It was number one, wasn't it? Yeah. Can you name any members of Ace of Base? No. 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 Where, were, where were they from? They were, Sweden. They were from Sweden, so there's going to be a Sweden. Sven in there somewhere, surely, yeah. They're a great band. I wonder if they did a third single. These are all facts that we'll give after the next song. Absolutely, we'll we'll read the Wikipedia page of Ace of Base. <laughs> I imagine intern Charles is currently reading about Ace of Base, aren't you? <laughs> No. no. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> no, no worries. Urban Cookie Collective. Are you even aware of the Urban Cookie Collective? Vaguely. Were they a collective? Or was that just their name? Were they a cooperative? Yeah, were they a cooperative? <laughs> this is a true swampy did backing vocals. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. They used to get in under the fence at Glastonbury every year. They didn't pay, but the Urban <laughs> Cookie Collective was... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the, unbelievably, the next song is called "She Wants," which is so close to what we what we actually wanted to play. It's a shame. It is. This is um, all that she wants. It's not as she wants by Sunset Sun. Josh she wants Sunset <laughs> Suns. This is the Josh Whitaker show. A little do, bit of behind just, the scenes. Would you just want to hear what I just said to Neil? And what, would you like to describe what just happened in well, the studio? Well, um, Neil said we've got ten seconds till the end of the song, and Josh very tentatively <laughs> sort of said, "Can we talk about this bass?" <laughs> and Neil, I said, "Shall we?" Double defos. <laughs> um, we have Google Image search days of bass, which is a treat. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, Charles. I don't know whether you could do a kind of composite picture of Ace of Base through the years but there's one ugly one and oh, three oh that's me they've one... nicknamed him Ulf Buddha Ekberg he's nicknamed Buddha <laughs> there's one who clearly spotted some attractive because we found out they're, they're siblings three siblings he spotted some attractive siblings and thought right I am pretty handy with a keyboard yeah, I've, learned, sax. I've learned four notes on the saxophone <laughs> I've got enough to make a band all I need is it, the only problem is I'm not a physically attractive man yeah what I need to do is find some uh, sexy siblings luckily he was in Sweden Oh, where you know you 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 can't uh, you can't throw a stone without hitting three attractive siblings. <laughs> if we have to skim it, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Poor Ulf Buderek. If you if you do Google image search Ace of Base, and I say why wouldn't you be? I I, I think I mean poor him. Fair enough, but uh, he's probably sit, he's sitting on a lot of money. He is sitting on a lot of money. Maybe that's why he looks so so unhappy. Because <laughs> he just doesn't buy you happiness. <laughs> no, exactly. Oh, um, anyway, shall we get shall we get onto the topics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've lost my mouse thing, Neil. Oh, so we can't. The, yeah. So, so the topics. Um, I mean, that that's that's. This is getting radio a bit too you. much behind the scenes now, isn't it? <laughs> Also, just to be clear, we're all on spinny chairs. If you're really trying to picture it. I think it's on. Is it not on webcam? No. When I was sat in reception, the webcam was on. That's just for reception. Oh, it's just for reception. <laughs> so it's just for the one guy who works in reception to see that you're definitely working. Well, it's busier Monday to Friday. That's true. That's true. I'm never here. <laughs> so so what, why is it broadcast to reception? Well, it's to give a nice kind of feel of what goes on within the building. Yeah. So they can see us now. There is no one in there. Well, it there? rotates across different oh, stations. Oh, yeah, it does. So... Case of mistaken identity. Go on then. Uh, this is. Uh, I once saw Guy Garvey. You're going to need to open up the second part of this text, Neil, because my mouse is broken. I once saw Guy Garvey in Costa Coffee in Prestwich. Pretty exciting nice. start, isn't it? Where I live. As I, as I was leaving, I looked at him and obviously recognised him, but I couldn't figure out where from. So I assumed it could be one of my girlfriend's friend's partners. That's a hell of an assumption, isn't it? <laughs> a girlfriend's friend's partners. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, um, Guy then said, all right. So I said, all right, what have you been up to? To which he said, nothing much. 
I then walked home and realised who he was. <laughs> I've heard Elbow's records and he's right. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what they could do with four notes of saxophone? Wop, 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 wop. <laughs> One day like this a year would see me. Wop, 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 wop. <laughs> I, By the uh, way, do you want to form a uh, like a like a sort of DJing remixing type thing? You know, on the when you buy we singles, can do the hits of the hits of the decades, but with wop, 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 yeah. over the top of it. Yeah, exactly. Get get the sample of it. Do you reckon? How long do you reckon it would take you to get good enough on the saxophone to play that four note? It's a great challenge for the next time I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Will you buy me a saxophone if I promise to learn the uh, four notes? We're in Edinburgh. We're in Edinburgh. <laughs> would you do it for one of the nights? Um, if we we'll, get hold of a saxophone. If you can get hold of a saxophone and give me a couple of days of practising. <laughs> what about yeah. if we present it to you on the first night, the 22nd, and perfect. then have to perfect it by the end night? That sounds, that sounds like a challenge, absolutely. You find a karaoke backing track, Josh sings vocals, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I play those four notes. Right, that's not the agreed. <laughs> that is not how it's going to work. As the producer, bang on. Josh Widdicombe, XFM. Noel Gallagher and his high-flying birds on XFM. It's time on the Josh Widdicombe Show for Call My Josh, Matthew Crosby. Hello. Five... Uh, facts on topic okay normally it'll be you know neighbors episodes or something we've gone broad today because i think your knowledge of football as a topic is so bad yes it's not it's not strong okay so i'm just gonna give you five facts about football if you okay. don't get five out of five i think it would be an indictment, an indictment of uh, the british educational system before the advent of the penalty shootout games would be settled by adding extra balls until someone scores like when pinball goes multi-ball <laughs> Right. <laughs> I am going to say that that is, that is a falsehood. Do, do you not think? I mean, I think it's a good idea. It's a great idea. It is false, yeah. But it's, it's a very, very good idea. It should be different coloured balls for different, different. different amounts of points. So basically, make it a big snooker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the World Cup was once stolen, but luckily it was found in a hedge by a dog. By a dog, yeah, yeah, I knew oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Out, yeah. Out too. Was the dog called... Pickles or something. Oh, like extra that. point. Three out of two. This is unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So Very we go. Good. Pickles the dog. All right. So two for two. Middlesbrough FC. Right. Once released a single with Bob Mortimer and Chris Rea. <laughs> <laughs> What's your thoughts on that? Now that that has got the ring of plausibility. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a I'm a big Bob Mortimer fan. I think I would have heard it. I am going to say. I'm going to go false on that one. It was true. Oh! But, as a consolation, at least you've got that to listen to when you get that's home. A, that's, a, that's a real treat. <laughs> so you're on three out of three because you've got the extra bonus point for pickles. Oh, OK. Sheffield Wednesday's mascot is a man dressed in a large fit, fish outfit and he's called the Yorkshire Kipper. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way that can be true. No, it's that's false. You don't believe that... You don't believe that... Pe what, that... Uh, that um, <laughs> Peter Sutcliffe is... Uh, no, it's not Peter Sutcliffe. I know, but you wouldn't invoke the, the, the memory of a famous serial killer. For a pun? No. Correct, four out of four. OK. During the 90s, Sir Alex Ferguson forced his whole Manchester United squad to take on a paper round to keep their feet on the ground. Sport, Paul Scholes was once fined a week's wages after delivering a Sunday Times without any of the inserts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how are you? I mean, it it doesn't feel true. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the extra detail. I think like I, I, if if you just said paper round and end it there, I would have said, I would have said maybe, but yeah. because of the Paul Skulls. You don't um, think they'd have fined him a week's wages for not putting the inserts in the Sun Sunday Times? This is the same Paul Skulls uh, who scores goals. Yeah, uh, yes, okay, that, from the song. By yeah. Chris Rear and Bob Morton. <laughs> Chris Rear. Um, uh, I am going to say... The song by Jonah, Louis and Vic Reed. <laughs> I'm going to say that is not true. It's five out of five. Oh, oh, brilliant. Four out of five plus the bonus ball, I think we'll give it. Yeah. Um, well, I thought you did quite well there. Thanks very much. I'm gutted about the Bob Morton one because that's almost a comedy question. Yeah, Weirdly, I know. I, I fell, you know, I fell down on what should be my my um, my topic. Your strongest subject, but paper rounds. That's paper the top rounds. top subject for you, isn't it? Has he done? I've, I've done paper. I've done paper rounds on many occasions to make ends meet when the you know gigs aren't going that well. <laughs> um, 
In fact, in fact, that's the reason I'm up at this hour. <laughs> <laughs> Just come back. Oh, Sunday's yeah. great. Double well, round. We're enjoying our independent on Sunday that you brought us, so that's good. More than welcome, more than welcome. All the inserts are there. There will be uh, more Call My Josh uh, next time, uh, but it'll be on a niche topic. <laughs> Although we have run out of them. Josh Whittaker. We have some correspondence from the listeners. I'm not saying that, you know, the listeners' game wiki race is taking off as given our, our listeners ideas above their station, but we've had another game suggestion, Matthew Crosby. Fantastic. I think. can't wait to hear it. Well, I, I, I would wait to see what you think. <laughs> Dear Josh and producer Neil, after the successful takeoff of listeners suggested game wiki races, we have a game for you, exclamation mark. Basically, you have to go on the setlist tracking website, setlist.fm, for example, and think of an artist. Give me an artist, Matthew. Um, well, let, let's go with super furry animals. Go with super furry animals. The super furry animals. You then look at their statistics and challenge your opponent to guess what year they played the most gigs in, how many they played, and, for a bonus point, what their most played song is. An example of a round. Person one. What year did Shed 7 play the most gigs in and how many did they play? Person 2. I'm going to say 1995 and they played 90 gigs. Person 1. Wrong. In 1994 they played 120 gigs. Person 2. Blimey. I mean, blimey is not the word I would use. <laughs> <laughs> it begins with a B. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoy this and it becomes a cornerstone <laughs> of eggs of ham for years to come. Who's that from? Nils and Reuben. We have yet to think of a pun-based name, but I'm sure that can be sorted out at a later date. Shall we have a quick game? Re Nils and Reuben, I apologise, because I think this could be a lot of fun. <laughs> Super furry animals, fun. Matthew, if you don't look at the computer screen. Okay, I won't look at the computer screen. I'm turning my back to the computer screen. Neil, have you uh, got the super furry... Uh, got the year? Yep. I tell you what, if Shed 7 played 120 gigs one year, then the Super Furry Animals are lazy. <laughs> Could I, for the record, in the year they played the most gigs, I, this can't be right, it was 28. They played 28 <laughs> gigs in the year they... <laughs> That can't be they're correct, very, can they're it? They're a very relaxed band. 28. <laughs> How do they keep the wolf from the door? <laughs> There's loads of them as well, isn't there? <laughs> that's, like it's a like... Gig, that's like a gig an animal. <laughs> <laughs> I should have gone for the polyphonic spree. That would have been the... Um, Right, okay, so, you're, this, so, what, so year? what year do they play 28 gigs? <laughs> 28 and then tire themselves out <laughs> with one gig every 15 days. Can I ask, did they take two years off afterwards just to recover? <laughs> the following um, year they did a, uh, they did seven. <laughs> wow. How many gigs do you have to do in a year to still say you're a, a, a working band? Could I just say in 2012... Between two, 2009, so you obviously you're not going to go with the later years. No, we no, know no, this. no, it's going to be, yeah. 2009, they did 24. 2015, they did 14. All right, so that's still, you know, they may be going to catch up, actually. Yeah. Between 2009 and 2015, they did one gig. <laughs> Well, they were sort of br broken know, up, weren't they? I but he's just doing one <laughs> in 2012. <laughs> okay, what year are you going to go for? I'm going to go for 1997. Okay. And Wrong! Oh. In 1999, <laughs> they played 120 gigs. They played 28 gigs. So that was 1999? Yeah. yeah, you meant to say blimey. Oh, sorry, blimey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for a bonus point, what's the most famous song? What song have they played the most? Well, um... How I, do you find this out? I, th I don't know that bit of the game. How do, yeah, how do you find this out? I'm going to say, unless you have to go through all of their gigs, <laughs> which, with, with, which <laughs> was not hard. <laughs> no, I can tell you they've only ever played 249 gigs. Have they really? Yeah. I've oh. played more gigs than that. Do you know what? I've been to, um, I've been to 1% of the Super Furry Animals <laughs> gigs. <laughs> You're basically a member of the Super Furry Animals, aren't you? <laughs> well, that game worked out. Thank you, Neil and Ruben. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I stand corrected. This is uh, Editors, blimey. Josh Whittacombe. New music from Editors on XFM, the Josh Whittacombe show. Now, we um, have been sent in a set list game, haven't we, where you play a game with set list FM on uh, which bands... Uh, bands... It's, it's rubbish. <laughs> it's not rubbish. I'm actually, I'm, I was very disparaging of it uh, before we played the game, but we've been bitten by the bug in that we have been playing it over the break. We have, as well. we have. We might. Ace of, we did play Ace of Base. We played Ace of Base. And no one's going to get this. No. 
It, well, I'll just give you some stats. Ace of Base have only ever played... Um, according to Setlist FM. According to Setlist FM, Ace of Base have played... Um, what was it, 35 gigs? 30 gigs. 30 gigs. 30 gigs, yeah, yeah. Of which uh, 18 were in Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> and um, their most played song is The Sign... Which they've played... Five times. That can't be right. No, <laughs> <laughs> they do 30 gigs and they don't play the sign at every single gig. That 25 is... gigs without the sign. <laughs> you would feel short-changed. <laughs> so that means that all that she wants has been played less than five times. Four times. Oh, no! <laughs> I think there might be glitches in setlist. Yeah, FM. I do. Um, well, I'll give you a... Um, do you want a, a set list from Ace and Bass? Sure. They opened with the sign. I saw the sign. Bum, 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 bum. L Life is a flower. Vision is got to write it. Lucky love. By the time we reach lucky love, I'd be thinking you need to drop. You need to hit all that she wants. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to the bar. If you play Happy Nation, oh no, they've played Happy Nation next. <laughs> <laughs> then Black Sea. Then to be fair, they did a cover of Banana Rama's Cruel Summer, which oh, I would have enjoyed. Fantastic. Then they did a song. If ever a song has got a boring title, <laughs> it's The Golden Ratio. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to write a song about ratios. <laughs> it is. Fractions, percentages, they're all hard to write songs about. The Golden Ratio, but then, to be fair, they dropped all that she wants. And then straight out of that into... A Tina Turner cover, Don't Turn Around. And then, uh, that was acoustic. <sighs> And then they ended on blah, blah, blah on the radio, which I don't know. I mean, I'll be honest, I only know two of those. <laughs> Encored with Beautiful Life. Isn't blah, blah, blah on the radio, isn't that that um, uh, Joy Division song? <laughs> blah, blah, blah on the radio. <laughs> we don't want to have to pay t Joy Division. Oh, for parody, parody yeah, rights. Yeah, parody rights. <laughs> parody law, that was a satire of Joy Division. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Hook, get off our backs. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Ace of Bass. Unbelievable. It's almost like we've. It's almost like Setlist FM isn't a complete resource. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any more Setlist FM related um, correspondence, Josh at xfm.co.uk. Josh Ocean colour scene, hundred mile high city. Great to have him back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh really come joined by Matthew Crosby. Hello. And he's just run in, Tom Allen. I haven't run. You haven't I run. very gracefully from reception. All Did the way you? In. Yep. Yep. Maybe if you'd run, you would have... Uh... Shut up, Josh. Okay. I know I'm late. <laughs> so what, what, why are you late? Uh, because there was a problem with the trains uh, from my usual station, which is Chislehurst in Kent. Yeah. And uh, so I had to go to Orpington. Um, uh. But it was... V oh, it was exhausting. But good story, though. Yeah, no. I'm <laughs> glad I asked. No, no one yeah. wants to go to Orpington. No one wants to go to Orpington, which is where you're from, Matthew. Well, no, I went to school in Orpington. Oh, I'm, from, I'm from Bromley. Okay. Thank you. So, so how are we, Tom Allen? Absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Good, yeah, good. Yeah, I feel very uh, enriched by my week. I feel like yeah, I've had a lot of great experiences. Week? Hmm? What have you done this week? I saw you yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and um, and what did I do? And I went to uh, what did you do Guildford with last night. For a gig or just yeah, for pleasure? For both. <laughs> <laughs> pleasure. The pleasure was all yours. <laughs> you it was all night. Guildford's, I think. You didn't go um, to the nightclub where Cheryl Cole... Um, Oh no, is that in Guildford? That is in Guildford, I've been past it. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about <laughs> the case, Neil. Neil looked at me as if I was going to discuss <laughs> evidence. Do, stick to the facts. <laughs> stick to the facts, I think she it's was convicted. Yeah, no, exactly. Cheryl Tweedy. Cheryl Tweedy, as she once was. Yes. Uh, yes, Guildford, she, but she wasn't there last night. I, I think not. she doesn't go there very often now. Maybe that's no, bad memory She's also in non grata in Guildford. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, if anything, that's one of the things they call her there. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt. Do you reckon Cheryl Cole has ever used the phrase persona non grata? Persona non grata. I imagine is what she says. Yeah, love that it. was quite good, wasn't that it? Wasn't it? A bad not great. No, it wasn't. The, there was two against one there. I thought that was all right. Did you? Oh, she's well trained. I, I know from okay, recording well, a podcast with you, you can't do it. I can't do accents. Try and say persona non grata. Do a Jordy accent. I can't do accents. It panics me. Persona non grata. Yeah, that's all right. Not oh, bad. Yeah. Not bad. Matthew, come on. Persona non grata. Okay, now... It's a little bit offensive. Now no, I, I think... <laughs> it did go slightly West Indian halfway through. Yeah, it went to a lot of places. <laughs> it was a round-the-world tour. <laughs> it's like Phileas Fogg, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's like a Phileas Fogg adventure of uh, offensive accents. I skipped Guildford, though. So. Now, now, Tom, yes. Uh, yes, on, on impressions... Um, yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm presuming you were travelling, so you haven't run the show, so Matthew's going to do a small impression of a bit of music... See if you can recognise. You can see if you can recognise the song. We've been talking about them all morning. I love music. You love music. I was just about to start. Okay, here we go. 
Oh, that's a good one. Is it um, coming to the garden, Maud? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. No, nor no. is it the fan dancer and her fan by Max Miller. Um, 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 we're, we're very much hitting the XFM demographic this morning. Is, um, <laughs> well, you know me. I love to hit the XFM demographic. But I, um, I don't, has anybody else answered it? Well, well, we, well, it, we, it came we, you're the only, the you're the only guest you've had. I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> we oh, haven't been I bringing was... people in. <laughs> <laughs> Off the street. <laughs> That's oh. how weak the games are that we play. <laughs> We've had 40 different people in already. Jim is like over... walking through Leicester Square, going to try and get some half price theatre tickets before that, mate. Can you come in <laughs> and just see if you can get this saxophone? Can you get this? I like that sort of very kind of 90s thing to do, isn't it? A vox pop. Oh, it street. is. You don't do enough um, vox pop. People don't do enough vox pop. They, aren't, they don't bother about their vox populaire. Would you like the answer? I feel like it's something that I grew up with that was in the charts. You definitely did. Yeah. Yes. Something like Ace of Base, oh, All That You Want. Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. wow, did I get it? Yes. Wow. Fantastic. Wow, that was exciting. That was it? exciting. I sort of, when you did it, I thought, I, didn't, I know what this is, I just have to dig around in my brain to get yeah. it. Didn't even need to hear it a second time as no. well. That's what no. I like about that. No, Fantastic. I'm very good like that. That's the thing, you see, people assume that I'm not on board with the XFM demographic, but of course, <laughs> with references like that, I totally am. <laughs> well, let's play James Bay and see how it sounds. Oh, with God, us. we have to. <laughs> yes, we do. Josh Widdicombe. Podcast. James Bay, let it go on XFM. Josh Willick, I'm still joined by Matthew Crosby. Hello. Tom Allen. Good morning, afternoon. Now, I'm not saying... <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yes. Did the clock just tick over? Yep, <laughs> 14 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, now, uh, well, maybe if you've been on time. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for continuing to bring that up. Um, now, um, I'm not saying that Matthew Crosby's got carried away with his ace of bass saxophone impression, <laughs> but we did... <laughs> There is a chance we've just spent three minutes discussing whether he could turn this into a daily feature for a, uh, for, you know, for a TV show. Well, I, I think the the live shows I've got we've got to get we've got to hire a saxophone for the live shows, and I'll yeah. play you a different saxophone. I, I've really I've got I've gone your saxophone I've gone big. Are you going to leave stand up comedy and move into saxophone impressions? Uh, yeah, but I am. In fact, yeah, forget <laughs> forget buying a saxophone. <clears throat> I am the I'm the I'm the human horn. <laughs> <laughs> I really regret getting that tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> would you mime the saxophone, or would you just... I'm not a performing monkey, all right? <laughs> no. No, you wouldn't. You'd just stand... I would just, sta I would just stand... I imagine you stood in a I suit. I would stand stood there in a gold suit <laughs> with brass buttons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> would you have one of those marionettes hats on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. A bit of reed on your <laughs> A bit of reed pointing out of the top of my head. <laughs> and... Uh, would you make someone blow into your head before you did the sax How sound? How dare you? No, I would not. <laughs> I, have a, I have some dignity. <laughs> would you paint your face gold? I would, yeah. yeah of course, course. <laughs> of course. Not a fool. Um, of course I'd paint my face gold. Um, all right, so do you want me to do, do one, see if you can... Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Tom, more. Tom, if you'd just like to blow into the top of his head. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Take his microphone down. Take his microphone down. Take his microphone. It's down. Anyone got any ideas? It was Baker Street. It was Baker Street. That's that's my entire I think the problem you've got is you'd have to branch out into other instruments. Yeah. Well, I said, I was saying during the music earlier that it does sound almost like a cor anglais. You could almost do the entire woodwind section of an orchestra if you wanted to. I could to. do uh, Benjamin Britten's A Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could do, um, you could do a tubular bells. <laughs> yeah, or an announce each instrument. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of costume changes, though. It really is, yeah. yeah. The tubular bells. I like how we've got from Ace of Bass to tubular bells. This is almost like that Wikipedia game. <laughs> oh, yes, but I'm supposed to be playing, No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. We'll do that during the song. Are oh, we going to do that during the song? Yeah. Okay. So, shall, shall we play a song? What? Then, what? Does, does Songs? <laughs> Tunes? Does it have records? It doesn't have saxophone in it. It's uh, the Kings of Leon's Red Morning Light, but I suppose there's only one way to imagine what it sounds like. <laughs> if, 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 if the, if it, <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. Podcast XFM. <laughs> Pearl Jam and Andrew Ridge, uh, George Michael. Andrew Ridge, he wasn't involved in Careless Whisper, was he? No, it was a. Oh, I think wasn't it wasn't it Wham's last single in the states and George Michael's first single? I think there was a. Uh, Who's in the room? 
Who's in the room? It's just a reset. <laughs> this is Josh Willickham Show. Uh, Matthew Crosby. Hello. Tom Allen. Hello. We now come to Wiki Races. Each week, Ivo Graham will lose a game of Wiki Races. <coughs> He's not here, so we're going to play uh, three of us. Get from one Wikipedia page to another in as few links as possible. Ooh. Very simple game. Last week, we landed on Hampshire. And where did we decide to go, Neil? We wanted to go to Biker Mice from Mars. The of course. Saturday, Sunday or Saturday morning Channel 4 show. Um, I did it... Um, well, I, I, I actually discussed it with Neil, and I feel like my discussion with Neil meant that I'd almost done research, so I think my score was invalidated. My score of four. Four? What? Of course it is. Would you like wow. to give... The, it was Hampshire... To BBC, BBC, ah. Channel Four, Channel Four, Channel Four programming, Biker Mice from Mars. That's very, very strong. What? And the Wikipedia page of Channel Four programming has everything they've ever programmed. It's, it's got a, children's, it's children's section. section on it. And that, oh, oh does, does the sections not? No, as long as you're not clicking onto a new page. If you if you open a drop down menu, I think on, that's. On exactly. my phone doesn't have drop down menus. I think it goes to it. Well, well, we'll we'll see. It's Matthew, like okay, you. what so kind Matthew, of a phone sorry. doesn't have drop down menus? <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking I'm about? two weeks away from an upgrade, all right? <laughs> Get off my back. <laughs> right, Matthew Crosby, how, let's go through your routes. Well, my route was uh, Hampshire to the New Forest. <laughs> Why did you think the New Forest? <laughs> <laughs> because I thought, who lives in the New Forest? A cheeky little mouse. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, no, no mouse. No, no mouse lived there. But I went to the American mink because I thought, what's an American mink like? <laughs> cheeky little mouse. Uh, and so I went to... So, so it was American Minx in the New Forest? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, although presumably holidaying. Um, <laughs> uh, then I went to Mammalia, uh, mammals, uh, where I fi found mice. Uh, and then I went to List of Fictionalised Rodents. <laughs> and then there was... I'm going to call this a drop-down menu of List of Fictionalised Rodents in animation in which I yep. found Biker Mice from Mars. Very good. So seven, six steps. Six, six or seven. Six, six or seven. steps okay. for Tom Allen to beat. Okay, well, fingers crossed, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, let's Do you go. want to know the numbers, or do you want to know the, no, the no, route just take tally as we go. Okay, so starting at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. Biker, mice from Mars. No, you one. Didn't. Okay, no. okay, then I went from... So you started oh, I started Hampshire, sorry. <laughs> I had to write down where I was going to <laughs> at the top, but I realised that wasn't... I didn't just type that in. No. At the top. One, one move. Go. So, um, from Hampshire to United Kingdom. Yeah. United Kingdom to Europe. Europe to Atlantic. Atlantic to North America, North America to LA. I thought at some point somebody's going to mention something about the universe and then I can click on Mars. <laughs> anyway, it didn't work out. I went from LA to the highway because I thought, oh, I'll get into... Right. Just so you know, it needs to be the next move if you are to equal Matthew Crosby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so from highway, if I won, I would have clicked on Bike Bike Mice from Mars. Yeah, but Unfortunately, what I did click on was expressways in South Korea. <laughs> Can I just ask what your thinking was that? I just, I think I just thought anything is better than where I am. <laughs> <coughs> so from expressways in South Korea, I went to police motorcycles. Oh, then I was this on motorcycles like eight. Then I was on motorcycle clubs, motorcycle rallies, mo motorcycle enthusiasts, <laughs> outlaw motorcycle gangs. Sorry, can I just stop? <laughs> Did you think that the biker mice from Mars were bikes that motorcycle enthusiasts? <laughs> well, <laughs> kind of, yes. In the way that I thought like they'd be referenced as like a see also, as a drop down menu. See also, yeah. See also. So outlaw motorcycle gangs. Yeah. Um, then I clicked on the Quebec biker war which I know a lot of us are familiar yeah. with. And then, <laughs> from then, I clicked on a forum. <laughs> you, left, you left Wikipedia. Left it all together, Matt. Oh, left it all together, Josh. I just, I just was done with it. Uh, and that was a forum, Police Fear, uh, British Columbia, Biker <laughs> War. Yep. And then I, was on, um, then I was on a forum that discussed, hang on, uh, called um, Marijuana Discussion Cultivated. <laughs> and then... <laughs> well, we know, we not, should we not be talking about that? Uh, let's, let's carry on, but okay. edit, edit yourself this. Sorry. Well, then the uh, and then uh, the final thing I got to before the song ended was why animals eat psychoactive plants. <laughs> <laughs> So so I didn't get that, that, to be fair, could have led to biker <laughs> mice from Mars. Well, exactly. So it's 17. I reckon 17. In, if you'd given me 30, I would have been there. <laughs> Sadly, we didn't have the time. Well, let's see if you can do it by the end of the show. No. <laughs> no I can Graham. try. All right, I can Ivo try. Ivo Graham seems a lot more uh, together now, doesn't he? <laughs> We're slagging him off for weeks. Well, you know, if you get into something and then you go down one route and you go down another and then... 
you know, you just get interested in things. That's the way the internet works, isn't yeah. it? I think you've had a more entertaining journey than any of us. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. My I mean, four stops was quite dreary. Well, if anything, efficiency is the is the uh, uh, antithesis of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, Neil, what will we go to? Um, what was that instrument? Yeah. The core anglais. The core anglais, not to be confused with creme anglais, which of course is custard. But you can go via it. <laughs> Shall we go to the core anglais via creme anglais? Yes. You're welcome. That will be the journey for next week's Wiki Races. Josh Widdicombe. The Maccabees marks to prove it more or less bringing to the end the Josh Wickham show on XM as a thank you for you all coming in. Uh -huh. uh, you can plug what you like. Pro Producer Neil, first. Uh, I'll plug the Maccabees. Maccabees are joining Maz on communion tonight from 7. Yep, Let's on XFM. That. On XFM. Yep. Um, and then come and see this show in it. In like Edinburgh, the 22nd to the 25th, something like that. That's the one. Half 10. 10.45. 10.45. Get there for half 10. Get a better <laughs> seat. And, um, <laughs> Get there slightly earlier because we will be asking you questions to fill in. Yes, exactly. Ooh. And if you have a saxophone, bring it along. Because <laughs> <laughs> at the end, we're going to end every show with a little jam session. <laughs> uh, sax jam. Sax jam. Um, <laughs> Tom Allen. Yes, hello. Are you in Edinburgh? I am, and we're going to be spending a lot of time together, Josh. Oh, yeah, we're living together, aren't we? Well, I wasn't going to say that because I didn't want to give away your celebrity uh, w um, well-being. But, yeah. yes, we are going to be living together in a very palatial penthouse. Yeah, very how patient. many of us are there? Six. About 75 people living there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in one flat, I think. But some pretty cool dudes. Uh, and I will be doing a show at the Stand 6 every day at 5.20. That's the Stand Comedy Club at 5.20 every day. What's it called? And it's called Both Worlds. And I'm also doing a show at the weekends at the Presence Courtyard at midnight, and that's free, called Everyone's Talking at Tom Allen, and it's a chat show. Matthew Crosby. I'll be doing a show at the uh, Just the Tonic at 7.40, so you can go and see Tom's show and then rush over wow. and see mine. 7.40 every day. It's called uh, Smaller Than Life. <laughs> uh, I'll also be doing some uh, secret dude shows with Pappies, uh, so check our website, pappiescomedy.com, for those, and you can find all the dates of my previews on my Tumblr page. Your Tumblr page? My Tumblr, Tumblr page, yeah. Oh, no yeah. one was expecting that to yeah, end yeah. the show, was it? 2011, oh. guys. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up. Smell the internet. Is it, what is Tumblr? Is that like Flickr? No, it's like a sort of like a sort of blogging Blog. micro blogging site. Yeah, it's, hmm? it's good fun. Well, I never. I'm on tour from September. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>